Thank you very much. So, um, I will start my talk by just catching up what I said in the last talk, so some who didn't see me yet get, get about the project, and then we'll go away from the hardware towards that platform ecosystem, because there's a lot of stuff going on in the world right now, and yeah. So basically, the idea of the ecosystem is shown in, in that infographic I made. We have, uh, on this end, we have the device. This is our current prototype, but there are more and more internet-connected cooking devices coming up. They need some kind of concentrated data, machine-readable data, and we want to have the recipes, that's the first coming from the cooks, from cooks all over the world. But we also want to have data about food, where do we get the ingredients to make that specific recipe, and other available data, nutrition data, and data from NGOs, how sustainable is this food, how healthy is this food, and so we can make diet plans. And having all this concentrated data, we can also make a great smartphone app independent of having a connected cooking device, because we have machine-readable data. So, yeah, what's coming? First, uh, some about the hardware, and then the platform, what's going on in the world, and some ideas about how we move on opportunities and needs. So my problem was very simple. I started cooking a risotto, I went for a quick mail check, and it ended up a bit like this. I was thinking, I need a device that can stir and control the temperature at least, but then starting thinking over the idea, I was like, no, I don't want a device where I say what it has to do for me, but it's actually the opposite. I want a device that I say, I want to make a risotto, tell me what you need from me. So in 2009, I was thinking about possibilities, the first CAD model, 2010, I get still virtual uh, prototypes in CAD, um, first talks to manufacturers who said it's interesting, but were still saying it's very futuristic. The first prototype in 2011 looked very dangerous. I remember a startup coach telling me, you shouldn't have shown me that prototype. I mean, it was a lot of epoxy, fiberglass, but I was already cooking under pressure. I, this on the bottom, this is a load cell, so I had the scale. This is an induction heater I just got from a supermarket with an Arduino and an EEPC. At the end, it, it worked and it showed that it's technically feasible. Um, we moved on developing prototypes. That's the fourth generation. It's actually over there at the food hacking base right now, probably making fudge, I'm not sure, but we will make fudge today on this device. So a short overview. On the front, we have a power switch. We have function buttons just to, to have some direct interaction on device. We don't want to have everything on, on a tablet or on a mobile device because you're never sure about connectivity. So there must be a way to safely turn the device off. The LED matrix we had on this device now already has been replaced by a touchscreen, you see on this version. We have induction heater, we have a stainless steel pot, we can stir inside the pot. The number 11 is a pusher, or here it is the pusher, we can push in the vegetables and inside we have a cutting disc that chops your onion. And yeah, and we have a Raspberry Pi as as brain of the device and the Wi-Fi USB stick so we can connect to the world. And we even have a spare Wi-Fi, a spare USB where we could add Bluetooth, for example, to connect to other connected devices using Bluetooth and, of course, Wi-Fi. And so we, we keep it open to, to connect it to all other kinds of devices. Version 2 of the prototype, we learned uh, we built everything inside the case, so it was no more the EEPC standing around, but we, we still had several issues. But then the next version could cook for many hours. I mean, last, last year we were cooking, I don't remember how many dishes, from tempura to deep fry to, to pressure cooking, and we got the LOL shield last year and built it into this version, 
we, we used the open source design of the Arduino LOL shield to make that LED matrix. That's the great thing about having open source hardware. You, you can use and reshare everything. We made the whole device in uh, welded stainless steel met sheet metal, which in the end was not the best idea because through the welding we got lots of issues about tolerances as soon as you start bringing in heat. The chimney, for example, was not round anymore after welding. So we had to move on from, um, from sheet metal to massive CNC machined aluminium. There you don't have problems with precision anymore. And as it is, CNC machining is not really more expensive than welding sheet metal because welding sheet metal is a lot of handwork. CNC machining is, is the machine doing the job. And so that's the current prototype. And I think it's pretty close to, to release. Don't see major issues anymore. So we want to, to stick with this design. And um, yeah, and hopefully bring it out as soon as possible as a developer's kit and later make the whole CE certification we need to be able to sell it fully assembled. So, to make it intelligent, of course, we need software inside. Intelligence means for us, on one hand, minimize the input from the user as much. If, if the software can anticipate something, we, we would like to do it. Of course, there will always be a manual mode where you can override it, but if you do 10 or 100 times the same thing, it's useful if the software knows it already, what you want to do. And the interactivity, we want to maximize it through, for example, a progress bar for scaling. So you tell us three people are eating, we calculate how many servings, how many of each ingredient you need, and we will show you on the touch screen a progress bar, add some rice and stop, that's enough, because we have the scale inside. Uh, timing is also a tricky part, so for each cooking step, we assume a cooking time, so you think, you, you know how long it will about take to, to cook, and of course we want to scale this with quantities, so if you want to cut or to peel uh, two kilograms of carrots, we will have a rough estimate that you won't do it in two minutes. And beyond cooking, shopping, health, sustainability, as I said, uh, data about nutrients is easily available. More and more uh, shops have their web shops, but I think it's quite difficult if you have 10 shops, which having 10, uh, 10 web shops, each one maybe changing his uh, available products on a daily basis. And on the other hand, you have a recipe and you have to match that recipe with what's available on the shops. So that's what we want to bring together. And of course, sustainability. So you can tell if I'm here in Hamburg and I want to cook a risotto, is there a local farmer who can give me the onions instead of taking onions that come from North Africa or wherever? And sharing, of course. There will be a recording mode, so you can try a recipe. If, if you like it, you upload it to the cloud, and other people can download it, try it, and maybe give you some feedback, make it a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, a little bit uh, hotter to, to get it better. And I think then, through a few iterations, we get great recipes. And everyone can exactly reproduce it. Um, the first time he cooks it. The basic infrastructure we have in the device is currently we have on, on the Raspberry Pi the whole MySQL and PHP running because we didn't want to reprogram the whole thing we made on the web. So we just copied the whole web database onto the device. Of course, later on we will have to change that. Uh, the Raspberry Pi over GPIO has a connection to a PWM or a microcontroller. I'm evaluating different options for this one. So this one has no electronics inside. It's the case we're working on the electronics because the Raspberry Pi cannot make a real PWM. We, we need either a microcontroller or a dedicated chip to have a precise PWM, for example, to control the motor. And 
precise analog to digital converter is also needed, especially for the scale. We tried many things, but below 24 bits ADC resolution, the scale is quite tricky to make. But there are chips available and we can read them over SPI. So we have the load cells, the pressure sensor and the temperature sensor going over that ADC. The interface is now just a web interface in JavaScript. Later, we of course want to make an API so we can have native apps for better respons uh, responsiveness of, of the interface. Um, yeah, we want all data we can get legally and there's a lot of data available. Of course, the recipes, the machine readable recipes, as I said, for each step, we want a temperature or pressure. I mean, for pressure cooking, we want the pressure because we can't fix uh, pressure and temperature in the same time or we are overdefined. Then, of course, the weight of the added ingredients, RPM of stirring, how long do you want to stir before we make a uh, pause? So we, we want to make intermittent stirring, if possible, and duration of that step. And uh, mode, mode is for the device, so the device knows, knows what's coming if we say it's a scaling step. The device goes into scaling mode and, for example, turns the heat off to have less interference on the scale. Communication is um, a JSON string, uh, a JSON array, so it's very easy to use it. It's, and we build it in a way that we can uh, expand it. You see T0 is the first temperature sensor, P0 is the first pressure sensor, M0 is the first motor. So if you want to build huge devices with many motors and many sensors, uh, you can just expand this. Um, for the ingredients, of course, we also need some data. We have what state is it? Is it fresh? Is it dried? Is it frozen? How long can we store it? And we directly link it to nutrient data and later want to link it to products and stores. So if an ingredient, for example, is an onion and we link it to the farmer who sells this onion. Nutrient data, we still use the American data. Uh, the Swiss guys now also have released their database. There are nearly each country has a database about nutrient values. Uh, of course, every database comes in a completely different format, so it's a bit tricky to get them all together, but we're working on it. But for now, with the US data, we can also already do quite a lot. For the products, as I said, uh, we want to have all products possible, so from the local farmer to the large supermarket. I mean, different people have different uh, wishes, different, and if you have the supermarket in front of the house and have a large family to feed, maybe you just need the, the cheap food. And of course, we want to add food that's maybe not accepted by supermarkets, people who have too much food can also feed it into our database and just give it away uh, because I think it's more useful to, to find someone who wants to cook something with it than just to throw it away. We want to, to get all possible feedback. I mean, on one hand, we have uh, vegan, halal, kosher. I, I call this kind of ethical criteria for food. Uh, then, of course, the the criteria, the, how happy were the animals, how, how sustainable is it to, to eat that, that fish, local, organic, gluten-free, lactose-free. And we want to make a badge system where the users can assign a badge to, to some products and non-profit organizations also can make that. And so we can quickly react maybe if someone is abusing an organic label also, we, we want to react as quickly as possible and through the database remove that badge if, if it was proven that, that the food is not organic. The shops, of course, can be from the farm to the supermarket, as I said. Each shop, of course, will have GPS coordinates, so it's quite easy to, to find the shop and to, to know to assign from a recipe, how far do I have to walk to get the ingredients to make that recipe? 
Now, that's more the, what I said in the last talk summed up. What's going on in the world? It's, it's really interesting to see how, how it moved in the last past years. When I started, people were telling me about Jetsons, about future, about crazy. And now more and more people start doing it. Connected devices come on nearly on a monthly basis from con connected sous vide cookers. I've seen many uh, connected frying pans, connected microwave ovens, connected ovens. From many are uh, crowdfunding projects. If you go to Kickstarter and Indiegogo, you see many projects like that coming up. Some are startups, for example, the Drop Kitchen Scale, uh, which is uh, the Bluetooth Kitchen Scale, which has a great interface, a great uh, interactivity, and is basically made for baking because all that all these baking recipes, you have the flour, the eggs, the milk, and then having a connected scale is very useful. I mean, it tells you, give me flour, and just shows you a progress bar, stop, and, and so you add all ingredients, and then you just mix it and, and, and bake it. But they are limited to that scale. They, they think in the future about maybe open it up for other devices. I'm, I'm in contact with with the guy from there, I have to contact him. But in the moment, they just launched this scale over all Apple shops in the US, so he's quite busy. But it's great that, that they could start. And we have big brands, big companies also wanting a part of the cake. But still, it's everyone cooking his little own soup. A mess of standards is coming, I think. For three devices, you will have three recipe platforms and you have three different apps if the manufacturers don't talk to each other. The market leader on the connected, on the multifunctional devices here in Europe is Vorwerk. They launched this year a new Thermomix, which now has a touchscreen and has recipe chips, so it has some intelligence. But they want to sell the recipe chips together with the cookbooks, so they don't tell you what's inside that recipe chips. But it works. I mean, they, they sell, last news I had, they sell a de uh, device every 38 seconds. So it works. But it's, it's complete the black box. I contacted them. Do you want to open it up? Do you maybe want to share your recipes with other devices? That's definitely not what they want to do. But I was seeing first posts on forums where hackers were looking to reverse engineer that recipe chip to look what's inside and how could we add other recipes to that chip. I mean, it's four pins. Maybe it's just USB. I don't have the device, but as soon as I get my hands on, I, I will try to find out. Then we have from the small devices, we have iGrill. It's a grill thermometer, also a very, very successful startup company. They on probably more than five years on the market. This is third generation of their Bluetooth thermometer, which is basically a great idea. I mean, you, see, you say you have a, a sirloin steak, you put in, you want it medium rare, you put in your temperature sensor, you say that on your app, and your app calls you when it's time to take your steak off the heat. You have many kinds of meat, but I didn't find a way to add and share new kinds of meat, new recipes. And that's, it's a bit sad. I mean, the guys at the fruit hacking base with, with Frantisek, they could use it for fermentation, for example. You could make so many things with that temperature sensor if it was not just limited to meat. But now it's limited to meat. Uh, they invested quite a lot of money to implement the Apple HomeKit infrastructure. But I also tried to talk to them, do you have some kind of recipe database you want to share? No, that's it's not available. Then we have Seb, large manufacturer from France. They launched a few months ago, or maybe one month ago, the connected Kukio. The Kukio, they made three generations of an intelligent pressure cooker. The first one had 50 built-in recipes. The second one had a USB plug for USB keys to add more recipe, and now the new one has, has a Bluetooth connection. They created a project they call Open Food System in 2012, 
with many partners involved from universities, specialists around nutrition, um, say it's about more than 10 million euros that were invested, probably also a part coming from, from government funding. And they, they told me it will be finished in 2015, their open food system. But they didn't tell me, will it be buried or will it be launched? Will it be... And it's, it's not so easy to find out what, what they mean by open. But what I heard from the project manager of the Kukeo is that the app they made for the connected cooker has nothing to do with the open food system. So I was thinking, yeah, why, why are you building uh, such a nice ecosystem? And then you make a connected device with, with an independent development. And it's amazing to see about the Kukeo how communities can develop because there's a huge Facebook community, has about 36,000 members, a French-speaking community, Seb is a French company, and they made a huge collection of recipes. That's the index of it. It's a Google Doc. If you click off on one of the recipes, you see a JPEG with the how to cook it. And so I think, yeah, and it's all in French, of course. Uh, so as soon as you don't speak French, uh, you have no access to that recipes. And since it's JPEGs, it's just fixed. You cannot scale quantities and so on. So maybe it would be interesting to connect that huge community of users creating a massive amount of, of data and, and great content to a tool called Open Food System or our recipe database or whatever. But it's interesting, they are kind of hacking that device because the original device had 50 recipes. And you see uh, advices like use the broccoli recipe to, to make uh, caramel cream or something because it's the same cooking time. So out of these 50 recipes, you, you can make nearly infinite uh, amount of, of new things if you just know, okay, I have to, to use the device in that way. Then we have the Chef Myself community. They also try to make an ecosystem. It's a consortium also of many companies. Taurus Group is an other large kitchen device manufacturer. They make a MyCook. It's a, actually a competitor of the Thermomix with a nice touch screen with Wi-Fi. This one has Wi-Fi. And they now are focused on an ecosystem for older people to, to give, them, give them back some autonomy. But at least with these guys, I, I'm in, in touch and I, I try to explain them, look, we, we shouldn't make it only for older people, we should make it bigger, we should connect all kinds of devices, all kinds of people to that ecosystem to make it more living and they are thinking about it. The great project, of course, is the Open Food Facts community. Uh, it's a French guy called Stéphane who started that, I think, where you can scan the barcode and you get data about the ingredients. This is mostly focused on prepared foods, uh, not on pure fresh food, but it's a lot, a lot of useful data. If, if you have some kind of sauce and you have allergies, maybe it's, it's very useful to know, can I eat this sauce or does it have some ingredients that will cause allergies with me? So, yeah, and it's an, it has an open API, so we will try to, to use this data with our recipes, connect this both together for, for helping the user. Donc, uh, Stéphane, si tu vois ça, continue comme ça, c'est génial. And, yeah, what what's are the opportunities? Um, we have on the hardware side, uh, if someone wants to make an open source, an open source hardware or any device that we could connect to our database, because now we have more and more devices, but still with the devices around, I have no idea how to connect them to um, to our uh, data, and you probably see that the more devices, the more people we have, the more it gets interesting. Hacking competitors, of course, 
I mean, the ones that are closed to us, I don't want to, them to stay closed to us. So I offer one every cook to everyone who opens up a closed source device. So if either it's the cookie or the Thermomix or whatever, if, if they don't tell us how it works, we will find it out. And then we have two devices connected to the database and more devices connected to the database. And yeah, we will get a device. And if you want, you are on the Hall of Fame of our device, of our Web, uh, website. If you want to stay uh, anonym, of course, it's not a problem at all. On the software side, we also have a lot to do. The text-to-speech output is somehow working already. Then route planner for shopping and an app for collecting data in the supermarkets, because the supermarkets also, they not very willing to, to share uh, what is in which supermarket. So it could be the idea to turn it around, having uh, a camera and a GPS sensor and a barcode reader in each pocket around here, we could get the data and find out what products are available where. And a virtual fridge to know I have this in stock and I should eat it tomorrow because it's going to be bad is also a very useful feature we don't have yet. And you probably also have many other ideas how we could grow that ecosystem, make it more useful. Um, yeah, so for this, we would be very happy to find programmers, uh, user interface designers. I mean, we have a working prototype, but the user experience is not perfect yet. I'm the electronics mechanics guy, and I also do the marketing. I'm also the CEO, so it's, it's a bit uh, too much. Um, yeah, every help is welcome. Uh, at the moment, uh, it's difficult to pay salaries. If someone of you knows uh, business angels or investors, tell them as soon as we get money, we will pay salaries. Um, and yeah, as I say, on the bottom line, money uh, solves many problems. So that's basically it. Um, we will. I'm not sure if the fudge are cooking already, but we will definitely cook them today. So it's at the Fugt Hacking Base, so just follow this direction along the wall and you will find us. And I also wanted to show you our nice video about the features, but I was so in my talk that I forgot it. So we can catch this up now. Shouldn't a cooker built for our times do more than just heat up your food? Meet the new EveryCook. Designed in Switzerland, EveryCook includes a powerful heater with precise temperature regulation. From melting chocolate at low temperatures to deep frying at high temperatures, you can do everything. We've added a full computer and advanced electronics. We've even left USB ports free to add more features in the future. The intelligent software connects over Wi-Fi to our free recipe store and gets you new recipes. You can use your mobile phone to select your favorite ingredients and get delicious suggestions. Every cook even gives you a customized shopping list. The powerful motor cuts your vegetables directly into the stainless steel pot for cooking. The stirrer keeps moving your food so nothing sticks to the bottom. Stirring can be intermittent or continuous at different speeds. For pressure cooking, there is a pressure tight cover with a safety valve. When the cooking time is over, the program will automatically open the release valve and safely release the steam. Did you know that pressure cooking is two times faster and saves the vitamins? To get the quantities right, we have interactive scaling. Every cook shows you a progress bar, so you can just pour until it says stop. Join our community of early adopters. Visit us on everycook.org. And thank you, thank you. Actually, the video was made with Blender, also open source. And yeah, if, if you can use Blender, you can make such nice videos. It's a, a great man in, in Poland who made it for us. 
And as I said, uh, it's, it's all open source. So all the details you see, they come from the CAD model. And the CAD model is, is on grabcat.com. It's a great platform where you can navigate through a whole assembly. And there you can really watch each screw and open it up, uh, hide some parts and look at some parts. So yeah, if, if there are mechanical engineers in here, it's always great to have someone looking through and seeing, oh, there's something too tight here or too loose over here. Yeah, so that's a bit early for the questions, but yeah, I think we can move on to the questions. Yes, please. Um, I think we shall start the Q&A session then right away. Um, one announcement for the audio recording of the whole session, please do not talk uh, during the question and answer. So the question and answer is for Alexis and the questioners. And because I'm standing here, we will start with microphone two first, then go to microphone one. And do we have something from the internet? No question from internet. Okay, then please microphone two. Hi, uh, nice talk by the way. And uh, you mentioned the French recipes and these this access barrier, uh, have you thought about internationalization of recipe, of your recipe database? Yes, that's, I forgot to mention, but that's a good point. If, if you start having a recipe built out of building blocks, you translate the building blocks and you can translate the 10,000s of recipes that are built out of them. And we need to have building blocks to make it machine readable. So currently our database is English and German, just to prove it works but you just add one table for each new language and all recipes get translated. Microphone one, please. Hi, um, I'm a chef, or I used to be a chef anyway. Um, my, I've got two questions. One yep. is about your device and the expected retail price yep. versus the, the art of actually having to cook yourself and learning when to put the potatoes in, when to put in the chili and so forth. So that's the first question, the economics of your you know, uh, data-centric device versus doing everything in analog format. And the second question is, you specifically targeted the retail market for households. Um, is there a reason why you didn't go for the industrial scale? Okay. Um, maybe first to, to the second question. Uh, we, we know from we know the size of the retail market that's the good thing about uh, thermomix they published an annual report and they they sold devices for 800 millions last year so there's certainly a market on the on the in the restaurants i'm also sure that there there is a market but i i i don't have access to it i think as soon as we have this one here running i will go to both i will on one hand put it on the website for for private customers but i will meet many chefs and talk to them for a chef probably five liters is a bit small <laughs> but for for a sauce or so five liters or sauce make a lot of servings so i think for yeah we we could start and uh, figure out how how good is the interactivity how is it for you as a chef um how how much guidance do you want or how much do you want to be free to to do what right. what what you like so what's your uh, estimated retail price what difficult the prototype price i mean um i i would prefer not to say it because there's still some variables i i have quotations ranging from here to here mm. so if if the guy gets it done for the low price i can make it for 1500 and and still have a little bit of margin left but if that guy just quoted for too cheap and will deliver poor quality it will probably be more because it's it's made all of aluminium it's it's strong metal so it it will have some price but i think for for a professional kitchen where where the you have devices going to 10000s and more I think it would be a very good price. I've got another question if nobody has one. Um, microphone four, please. Um, hello. Um, I have a f first really a quick suggestion about people who you could talk to. I don't know if you've ever contacted the Food Assembly. There might be people who you might be interested in talking to. They are a network of farmers, 
and buyers. Yep. And a question um, about, in terms of opportunities, I feel like there could also be a, a, a place for uh, content and information about the food in terms of um, patents on seeds and issues such as biopiracy or traditional knowledge of the use of plants that could be interesting to yeah. maybe link through because you're, you're tackling the topic of food and so that you really have a really good access point for this topic. Do you, do you think that could work? Yes, um, I think that that could be easily integrated into that badge system we want to have. So now it's question, do you want to have a positive or negative aspect of it? You could make a badge to say it's patent free and it's GMO free to, to have a positive approach to it. But I think that's, that would be definitely make sense because I, patents on seed is... What, what, I, what I think could also be interesting in that sense would be maybe to actually write the story of the, uh, of the ingredients being used. Yep. And, and, yeah, and the yeah, traditional knowledge because dis disseminating the information also makes it more difficult to patent afterwards because it's been yep. out there in the public domain already. Yeah. Yes, we, we have to see where, where we draw the line. I mean... Of course, we want to have as much data as possible, but for, for some things we thought we could also just link to Wikipedia and have, have just that, that existing link. So if you have the data on your platform, maybe linking is, is a better option than pulling it into our database. But let's stay in touch. That's yeah. certainly useful. All right, thanks. Okay, microphone three, three please. Uh, hi, so first of all, really big kudos for keeping it open and like working on networking with other projects. That's really great. And my question is <clears throat> somehow around branding, because I see that you work on this hardware product, which is sort of your yeah. for your startup, and there's this kind of commercial aspect in it. And yeah. uh, also you work with this like knowledge bases, data about food and yeah. so on. And I wonder how much you would like to associate with your Evercook brand and how much you would like to keep more in like neutral, there's open food facts and open product data. There's also open food network, which do some open source software. So the question is like, do you have like some kind of interest in keeping this knowledge associated strongly with your brand? Or you kind of feel open to work with like more neutral brands and like don't focus on your product with branding? We we inside our startup company were, still, were even discussing about do we make the hardware or do we focus on the platform? <laughs> so, and for the platform, we created the name called DigiMeals, so digital meal info. And we probably will move all the platform from the Evercook domain where it is now to a DigiMeals domain to have it independent because it, it is strongly linked, but it's, it's something completely different, of course. Well, one is a web platform and one is a device. And so the current working title is DigiMeals. We, we can't find another name for it. And we, we really want to, to keep it open. And yeah, so that's, that's I mean, we, we released all the code we wrote until now on the GPL version 3. So, Probably there's no way back. 